Hey, zoology students. It's me again. Today, we're going to be doing lesson two on the annelids. And this is going to talk about um, the polychaetes and their and all their wonderful glory. So let's uh, oh, I'm blurry there. I'm back. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. All right, our first group, we are going to talk about the polychaetes, and that is class polychaeta. Um, they are segmented worms, as we can see. Uh, the segments here and there and there. And the polychaetes are, uh, one of their big characteristics are the appendages. they call parapodia, and they are paired appendages that stick out the side. And we'll talk more about them later. So here's another example. Uh, you, again, we see the antennae, which a lot of times we don't really see in uh, earthworms or leeches. And then the paired parapodia, the paired appendages that they use to help uh, get along through their environment to tunnel um, and to swim and, and crawl along the bottom and whatever it is that that particular polychaete wants to do. Basically, uh, they aid in locomotion. Uh, polychaete is, polychaeta is the largest and most diverse of those three classes. It includes mainly marine worms, which means they're all going to live in the ocean with many bristles or CT. Now the earthworms have CT, but theirs are very small and you really can't see them, but you can feel them. And if we get to uh, handle any of the earthworms, uh, if we go to dissect them, um, you will you will notice that. The polychaetes again they occur on a they occur on appendages called parapodia, meaning uh, that they will have. I don't know why it's worded that way, but they will have the uh, paired appendages there on the side called parapodia which are used in locomotion and in respiration. So as they fan them back and forth, that helps get that oxygenated water into their uh, bodies. Uh, they feed by catching prey quickly by shooting out the pharynx. So your predatory polychaetes, this is their pharynx, which usually in earthworms is going to stay inside their bodies. But the polychaetes, have the unique ability of thrusting this outside very quickly. It shoots out really fast. And then they have these jaws here that uh, act as pinchers and they will grab a hold of the prey as they, uh, as if they get too close, those jaws are referred to as denticles. They hold prey as the pharynx retracts. So this thing shoots out this whole, this whole thing here shoots out these denticles pierce the prey and then they draw the pharynx back inside their body of course with those jaws uh, ho holding on to the animal and they bring it back into their body that way not all polychaetes are going to have this uh, pharynx shoot out and grab their prey in a predatory manner uh, some of them are filter feeders they will tunnel uh, down into the bottom and then they'll stick their uh, their filtering body parts out into the water and collect the the way that the echinoderms, the feather stars and, and whatnot would it would would catch their prey. Uh, some polychaetes will do the same thing. Their movement or locomotion, the longitudinal muscles are also responsible for rapid crawling. They can really wriggle around and dig those parapodia in and help them uh, scramble across the bottom. They alternate contraction to produce a wave-like wriggling. So they will contract their muscles on one side, which causes their body to bend. And then they contract on the other side of their body, which causes their body to bend in the other way. And that's how they will move through their environment. Circulation is closed, meaning that their blood will stay within their blood vessels the entire time, as opposed to an open circulatory system. The blood pressure is created by peristaltic contraction of the dorsal veins, which pumps blood anteriorly. So peristalsis is a wave. Uh, when you swallow food, uh, there's a wave of muscle contraction that chases the food 
down your esophagus the same way when, uh, if you can imagine getting the last little bit of toothpaste out of the tube, you know, you start squeezing at the bottom and you push the toothpaste forward. Um, this wave of muscle contraction does the same thing in, in a hollow tube, such as your esophagus or in a blood vessel. That wave will follow uh, the blood and push it forward. And that is what peristaltic means. Excretion, wastes are eliminated through the meta metanephridia, which is one of the, uh, that small kidney-like structure that uh, the little tube that was in that diagram from before in lesson one. Reproduction, most reproduce sexually, which means they're, they're going to mate with each other. Uh, but a few reproduce asexually through budding. Budding is where they start to grow a new organism on their body. And then as that organism, the newer one gets large enough, it breaks off of the parent and goes about its business. So imagine if we reproduced by budding, um, you would start to grow an embryo uh, on your shoulder or something. And then as that embryo would grow into a fetus, once it was big enough, it would fall off of your shoulder and you would have a baby. Uh, now, the thing to remember is since there is no exchange of gametes, this type of asexual reproduction is basically Mother Nature's version of cloning. Uh, without the ability to uh, mix the DNA by, by the blending of sperm and egg, um, this new baby that you would have fall off your shoulder would be genetically identical to you. In essence, it would be a clone. Uh, so that is how budding works. And fragmentation means a piece falls off. And, and like the sea star, uh, you cut a piece off and it just grows a new body. Same principle. Sedentary polychaetes, these are your filter feeders, a lot of them, uh, burrow and live in tubes. The parapodi are modified for feeding. So those... Uh, the leg-like structures on the side of the body would be modified for feeding instead of locomotion. This compensates for the inability to go out and find food. They stay in one spot and they let the food come to them. They filter feed for plankton and other small invertebrates. So there is an example of a sedentary, sedentary polychaete. As you can see, these parapodia are much larger and thinner and their their job is to just catch organisms as they float by all right and that's going to cover everything we need to discuss with the polychaetes all right that's going to wrap things up for lesson two in the polychaetes so i'm probably not back yet so you know what that means get out of youtube go back to schoology find the exit slip on annelids lesson two over the polychaetes and take your exit slip. Uh, hopefully you took good notes. Remember, you can, you can use the notes to answer the questions. This should be easy money for you. We will talk to you later.